In this video, I want to finish up our talk of the pentose phosphate pathway by talking about a disease that relates to it, specifically glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and hemolytic anemia and how they play a role here. So glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is an X-linked disease, so it's a genetic disease. And basically, what happens with this is that we have low levels of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And this, of course, is the enzyme that's involved in the oxidative phase of the pentose phosphate pathway. So if we have low levels, we have a deficiency of this enzyme, we're going to have less of this oxidative phase of the pentose phosphate pathway. And of course, the products of that pathway, or of, the, of, or of that phase of the pentose phosphate pathway, were, of course, NADPH and ribose 5-phosphate. The non-oxidative phase creates R5P without creating an ADPH. So if we don't have G6P dehydrogenase, we could still create R5P in the non-oxidative phase, but as far as NADPH goes, we're probably going to have low levels of NADPH. Some of the symptoms of this deficiency are black urine, jaundice, really low levels of hemoglobin and really, really high levels of red blood cell death via hemolysis. So how does this actually relate to the pentose phosphate pathway specifically like in more detail? Well, what happens if we have low levels of NADPH? Low le if we have low levels of NADPH, that means we cannot regenerate GSH, which of course was the reduced form of glutathione. And that act acted as an antioxidant. So if we can't regenerate GSH because we have low levels of NADPH, we're going to have low levels of GSH, which means we have low levels of antioxidants. If we have less antioxidants, that means the oxidants that do come in can destroy cells by destroying biomolecules. And this, of course, can lead to death. Now, there are some cells that are specifically harmed by it, um, or, or more than others. Uh, red blood cells, to be specific, they're especially harmed by antioxidants or by these um, by these oxidants. And um, the obvious thing is that the membranes and the biomolecules are destroyed, which is something that we'd expect because if there's if there's low GSH around, we we can't fight off those oxidants. But further than that, with red blood cells, uh, low GSH levels compromise the structure of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin it actually depends on GSH to some extent to keep its structure intact. And when there's low levels of GSH, the structure of hemoglobin is compromised. And the, then we, what happens is we have the cross-linking of these hemoglobin molecules. And then we have the formation of these things called Heinz bodies. Heinz bodies. On the red blood cells. So in case you're curious, I conduct a Google search of that. Um, basically what happens is that the red blood cells get deformed, so we have a, a red blood cell deformity, so they're deformed, and this is followed by cell lysis, which of course is basically just a cell explosion. So this is what we call hemolytic anemia, hemo of course referring to the blood, and lytic referring to lysis or the cell explosion. Um, anemia is basically when you have either too too little or too few red blood cells, or if you have too little or too few hemoglobin. So there's a hemolytic anemia, and that's what actually is the term associated with this with what happens here, and um, that's what actually kills these patients. So how do we stop this? How do we how do we deal with this? Well, first and foremost, you should know if you have glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, um, and if you do, well, you probably want to stay away from oxidants, right? So if you stay away from these oxidants so that they don't go in and destroy your cells. Some things that have a lot of, fa um, a lot of oxidants are fava beans. In addition, you want to stay away from um, pamaquin, which is this anti-malaria drug. And um, it, can act, it can act as an oxidant. So some patients who have malaria, one of the treatments is pamaquin. And I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And if, if uh, this is given to a patient with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, the oxidants in this drug could potentially kill the patient. So 
before this drug is administered, the patient must be screened to see if they have that deficiency. On a final note, I will note that I'm not a doctor, so if you have any concerns about any of this, please go see your doctor. Um, I am by no means providing uh, medical advice here. I'm just trying to sort of look at this from an academic, academic perspective. In any case, I hope that video was helpful, and thank you for watching. Hey folks, my name is Mafood. I am a tutor. I graduated from UC Riverside with a degree in biology, and on graduation day I had a little bit of trouble with the wind, as you can tell. The subjects I tutored for are listed here. In the description below, you'll find my email address if you have any questions, and you'll also find the links to two listings, my university tutor listing, which is for in-person tutoring, and my Google Helpouts listing, which is for online tutoring. Thanks for watching.